MoMA is a modern art adventure at every turn. I was with my brother and I, I grabbed onto him. I was like, oh my God, look what it is. And he was like, what, what? I'm like, it's a water lilies. I have, I was like so close to it. And I'm like, it was the actual painting. And like you try to think what the artist was feeling and like that he was that close to the canvas as well. And it's amazing. <laughs> when you come in the museum, what you encounter in fact is a soaring atrium that is skylit, and that is a huge surprise because spaces of this scale rarely can be found in New York. And then of course, anchoring this space is Barnett Newman's staggering broken obelisk. Monumental obelisks are inventions of ancient Egypt. And by inverting the obelisk and balancing it atop the pyramid, of course, Newman's made something new, something modern, but something that is freighted with this kind of legacy of ancient art. For us, contemporary art is the way in which we look through and at the art of the past. Building on the past, the new work takes elements of the past and reshapes it. With the historical work in the collection, it's quite clear these were the important trends, these were the major artists. For the art of our own time, we can't know that for sure. We're still too much in the thick of it. And in a way, that's the tricky part of being a contemporary art curator. In 10 years, in 20 years, we'll see our own mistakes, our own omissions. We'll have realized, oh, here are the artists we were so in love with who now everybody's forgotten. And here's an artist who turns out to have had such an impact and nobody even noticed him. Van Gogh That's exactly what happened to Vincent van Gogh. Thank you. And, uh, you know, this he only sold one painting during his lifetime, even though he painted nearly 800. One of these, the Starry Night, is now one of the world's most celebrated images. Starry Night is one of the great pictures in the collection. And of course, the first show at the museum, this painting was, was one of the paintings in it. We were founded in November of 1929, not an ideal moment to open any kind of institution in America. But in literally a matter of months, the museum took off. 47,000 visitors came to see MoMA's first show, held in an office building featuring works by the pioneers of modern art. Front and center was The Bather by Paul Cezanne. The figure seems almost paper thin. Cezanne's constructions are flat and planar. We notice the color. Cezanne's colors are intense and unnatural. It's applied in patches. We get a building up of pictures from brush strokes. Cezanne's Bather is boldly stepping forward toward a new world of modern art. Also deliberately departing from tradition was Georges Seurat, who rejected the rapid and romantic brushwork of the Impressionists. To capture the look of natural light, he constructed a system of colored dots called pointillism, based on the science of optics. And Paul Gauguin not only abandoned Impressionism, he abandoned civilization for Tahiti, where he expressed the exotic through flat forms and violent colors. In his paintings, and most daringly, in his woodcuts. He treated woodcut with such energy and really released this kind of primal force from the wood block. He actually revolutionized the woodcut medium uh, with this group of woodcuts. At MoMA, the modern art of any age is not the newest, it's the next. It's the experimental that becomes the established. The work that makes me scratch my head and makes me even a little bit uncomfortable because it doesn't look quite like what I'm familiar with already, that's what the museum is looking for. It could be work that's really quiet, but somehow it's changing the way we think about art and changing the way we think about the world. <laughs>